Hello everyone, my name is Sean Levick and welcome to our next series of Google Earth Engine tutorials. I'm from the Gears Lab, Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing, based in Darwin, and we explore ecological processes at landscape to global scales. In this current series, we're exploring Google Earth Engine as a tool for processing large archives of satellite data for Earth observation. Now, in this series, we're going to be exploring a feature within the Earth Engine environment, which is called examples. So one of the really great things about Google Earth Engine is the large user base and an active number of developers who are actively pushing it forward and creating scripts that are very user friendly. You will have learned in, our, in the previous videos that the Earth Engine environment is JavaScript based. And for many students that I teach, this can be quite intimidating in the beginning. But what's really useful is going through worked examples. So we're going to start today by just having a look in your, your top uh, left hand panel. You will see any of your own scripts up here, those that you have write and read access to. And you'll see this little tab, Examples. If you click on here and come down to the one <clears throat> that's called Image Collection, this is what we're going to focus on today. And we're going to look at creating a filtered composite. So if we click on that, we see that the code editor is populated with a small JavaScript code. And remember that two forward slashes indicate comments. These are not read by the processor. These are useful notes to yourself or to others that you will be using your scripts. So reading the green bits tells us what the code underneath is going to do. So this filtered composite is going to filter an image collection by date and region to make a median pixel composite. We're going to filter to only include images intersecting Colorado or Utah. And in order to do that, we're going to create a polygon using the polygon definition. And what's defined here are the corner uh, coordinates of the states of Colorado and Utah. That defines the spatial boundaries of interest. And then next, we are going to call up a collection, an image collection. And in this example, they are calling up the Landsat 7 Collection 1 Tier 1 Raw Archive. They are filtering by dates. To um, Remember, this is in US style dates. So 2000, 1st of April to 1st of July. <clears throat> so that means this command filter date means that we're going to query this collection of images for this date range. But we're also only asking for images that intersect with filter bounds. Now, if we pull up all these images, there's likely going to be clouds in some of them. So why they call this a filtered median composite is that we're creating a variable called median, which means we're going to take the pixel based median. So we're going to stack all the available images on top of each other. Then we're going to drill down on the pixel level through each pixel and retain the and compute the median of that stack. And that's what we're then going to display. So we're going to create another variable result, which will be the median. And sorry, the result is coming from the median of the collection. And we're selecting bands three, two, and one. Remembering this is Landsat 7, so that corresponds to red, green, and blue. And we're going to plot that result, map add layer result. That's just a visualization parameter. And then we're going to set the center. So let's run that script and see what happens. After a little while, you'll see 
number of images come up covering the states of Colorado and Utah. We can zoom in a bit to have a closer look. And we can see that this is in fact quite a large number of images, which are relatively nicely mosaic. Um, what I do like to do, which we can add to here, is that once we've filtered the image collection, it's nice to print that to the console. So we're just going to type print collection. So this collection matching that there. If I run that again, now you'll see in the console here, we get some information about our image collection. And basically what I wanted to see is how many elements we are finding. So these are actually 237 Landsat scenes that we are displaying here, bearing in mind that a number of them are stacked on top of each other. So this is a great starting point. Um, this is a, a good point to create your, your composites from, but often there's sections in here that you're going to want to alter. For example, you might be interested in more recent imagery. So you might not want to be using Landsat 7, but rather Landsat 8. So let's call up Landsat 8. Typing in the search bar up here, Landsat 8. Um, I'm going to choose the Landsat 8, Collection 1, Tier 1, Top of Atmosphere, Reflectance. Let's click on there, move over here, and we can see our Image Collection ID. I'm going to select that whole ID, copy it, and I'm going to come back here, Line 17, Variable Collection. I'm going to paste that ID in here. So I don't want Landsat 7 anymore, I want Landsat 8. I'm going to update the note to myself. So we're now creating a Landsat 8 composite. Um, and I'm also going to change the date. Let's, let's do this for the whole of 2016. So in order to achieve that, we need to come down to the date range here. Change this to 2016. 1st of, 1st of January. And let's go right through to the 31st of December. And you, some of you might notice that there's some things we need to change down in the visualization parameters, but first let's give that a run and see what happens. We don't get any errors, which is good. It takes a little bit longer to compute the image collection. And looking up here, we can see that now we are working with 960 different Landsat scenes. This really highlights the power of Earth Engine, being able to rapidly um, locate and run a computation on a huge number of, of images. This would take an incredibly long time if we were downloading to a local machine. <clears throat> okay, but our images have come out completely black. Now there's a few things to take note of. First of all, is that we're now using Landsat 8. And if we just look at that collection again, we can see that band 1 here is actually the coastal aerosols. The blue band, band is actually band 2. Green is band 3. Red is band 4. Near infrared is band 5. So these settings here were done for Landsat 7. If we want a true color composite, we need to update that. So we're going to change this now to band 4, band 3, band 2, which means we're pulling out the red, green, and blue bands from Landsat 8. Also, this gain parameter, um, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what you're going to get from that. What I prefer to do is just head over to the inspector and click around a bit in your image. That way you can see the types of values that you're getting out of here. And for top of atmosphere, Landsat 8, generally your max is going to be about 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. So I prefer to just <coughs> change this parameter to a, a maximum value. 
this helps with the histogram stretching. Put that at 0 0.4. Let's run that again. Um, now we should have a better true color visualization. Here it comes. If we hover over there, we see that's layer one. What we can also do is just add over here a title. Let's call this Landsat 8 Composite. And we see we have a little error here. Let's quickly look through and see. Oh yeah, we have an extra close bracket there. Let's take that out. Run that again. So we using map add layer results. That's the maximum value for the histogram. Landsat 8 composite. And under layers, that's now called Landsat 8 composite. If we wanted a false color composite, um, we would call up the near infrared band, band 5, into the red channel, move red into green, and shift up the, the green channel too. So now we, display, we will be displaying near infrared, red, and green. Running that will give us the false color composite. Take a little while to come up. So that's very useful. What might not be so useful for you is this location. So this is a predefined polygon, but let's say you were interested in a different region, let's say somewhere in Brazil. What we can do is just draw a polygon and replace that, that um, variable definition. So what I would do is just highlight that deleted. Let's come over to the geometry tools. Let's draw a geometry. Let's uh, zoom in somewhere around Brasilia and draw a polygon. So that's our polygon. Now we have a peer variable geometry. Um, throughout the code it's called polygon, so I'm just going to rename that to polygon. And if we run our script now, it should work, but you'll see that the map has recentered to the United States. That's because we have this line in here, map set center. So we, if we zoom out, we can see that um, our script is working but we need to reset that map set center. We'll use the inspector again to find out our coordinates and that comes up here. So what we'll do is we'll just update this to match these values roughly. So minus rather 47 and minus 15. And let's run that again. Now you'll see how the map centers. Um, so these are your, your lat long coordinates. Um, this value over here sets the scale of the zoom when you, when you map that. If we change this to two, for example, and run it, it zooms us right the way out. Uh, if we go to 10 and run it, it zooms in pretty close. Somewhere around seven might be what we're looking for. So that's just a way if you if you're sharing scripts and you wanted to when you run the code to come up at, at the, the right spatial extent for your particular interest. The, um, the great thing about this, we'll just quickly. Well, I was going to switch that back to a um, a true color composite. So we'll go four, three, two. And just run it again. Um, remember that in the console here, we can see that we're actually looking at 54 different scenes. The great thing about the polygon approach is now, if we change our area of interest, so we're interested in something on the coast here, we can just click that polygon, drag it over here, 
rerun our script and up pops the new image. Um, remembering that depending on where you've centered your map, you might have to change that. I can just bring that in, put it over that water body, run it again. So this is extremely powerful. Um, you know, if, if this is your particular study area, you can very quickly pull up images for a particular year, make a composite. And if you're wanting to do a change analysis, for example, you could bring up a composite of 2010 and a composite of 2016, just with a tap of a, well, a few strokes of the keyboard. So I hope you found that, that useful. Um, I will post the, the modified script here on my GitHub repository. That's also under the name of uh, Gears, Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing. Um, what, one thing to remember is that once you've modified one of these example scripts, it's worth going up here, save as, save it in a name that's useful to you then you can quickly come back to it when you need it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Cheers.